Praise the Lord, everyone. Good morning to you. It is Friday morning, the very last day of the month of March, and our last opportunity to pray together as we go into the weekend. Uh, today looks to be a very stormy and dangerous day. We pray that you'll be safe wherever that you are today, uh, especially those here uh, in southeast Missouri and in other areas where uh, there's a chance of tornadoes today, but we know God is uh, our protector, and uh, just make sure you stay safe today. And I also would like to take the opportunity to invite anyone who's watching uh, who does not have a home church uh, to come with us for our first service here in the month of April. Uh, Palm Sunday, this Sunday, going to be a great time of worship in the house of the Lord. I want to report to you this morning on a few um, praise reports. Um, and updates. Uh, Bree was back to her normal self yesterday after having a seizure the night before, and I want to personally thank everyone for praying for her. She was able to participate in our group yesterday at the RCF and feeling much better. Anthony Sifford continues to do great with his outpatient therapy. However, his ENT appointment yesterday revealed that his right vocal cord is still paralyzed. And if this does not begin to function within six to nine months after the stroke, it will require surgery to correct the problem. He has another appointment for recheck of this on May the 9th, and we will be praying for a miracle healing in the meantime. Also, he has a hematologist appointment today that we need to cover in prayer. Johnny reports that Gary has found a faith-based uh, support group and has started back to church in Owensville, and that is so good to hear. I have a pastor friend in Owensville uh, who has a very, very um, strong recovery ministry, uh, Sister Sheila Bowens, and perhaps that's even uh, who he's referring to. I don't know, but they actually have um, built up quite a recovery ministry and even transitional housing and uh, all that kind of thing that goes along with their support groups there. So uh, good to hear that report from Johnny this morning, and we need to keep praying for a lot of people who are battling with addictions and are enrolled in our various um, recovery groups in the area. Um, we have many strong support groups here in Southeast Missouri, and I'm thankful for that. Um, some of the people we need to be praying for in this regard include um, Ashley Johnson, Allen, Dawson, Charles Gossett, William Davies, Frank, um, and we need to pray for uh, family members as well who need the strength to take care and be a source of intervention at times on behalf of their loved ones. And we need to continue to pray for peace and comfort uh, for several families, uh, for Robert Holding, for Pastor Jeremy Perry, Kathy Hardy, the Milam family, uh, Marsha Moore's family, Gary Hastings and his family, the O'Neills, um, mourning Helen's passing, the Mizell family uh, having visitation for Terry and his homegoing service tomorrow morning. Uh, let's, let's be their strength today through prayer. Uh, also keep praying for Rebecca Mitchell's sister's boyfriend who just lost a nephew to drug overdose uh, at the young age of 23. And those who are affected by the Covenant school shootings definitely need our continued uplifting in prayers. Also, we learned yesterday morning early that nine service members lost their lives in a Black Hawk helicopter accident at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. And uh, this is um, where uh, Sister Carmen works, and she's going to be no doubt directly affected um, with the families and the children uh, who have lost someone uh, dear to them, a parent or a relative or a friend close to them. So let's cover um, the 101st Airborne with our prayers this morning and all those who are connected to them. Um, other military personnel are praying for Andrew Williams, who's serving in our armed forces in, Ro in Romania. That's Judy and Mike's grandson. Johnny's nephew, Mark, needs our continued prayers, too, for improvement of his health so that he can get back on duty. 
Uh, we need to pray for uh, Pastor Chuck Clark, who lost his job recently. We're praying for him to find the right employment at this time. Uh, let's lift up those who are in nursing homes and pray for compassionate and competent care and encouragement for each of them. We have many other spiritual needs today. Let's continue to believe for breakthrough in our uh, communities. We need to pray for uh, Marsha and Britt's family, their son Josh especially, uh, Beulah Ziegler's granddaughter Amber, Jean needs the Lord, uh, Holden, who is Judy Johnson's grandson, needs the Lord in his life. Let's keep praying for Regina Marlin's family, for uh, Brother Mark Perkins' children, for the Sappington family, Debbie Biddick's daughters and their families, Rebecca Williams' mother Dana, Baby G's adoption proceedings, Sister Pam's family, Judy's daughter Jennifer and her children, and husband Chris and Michelle Clark, Annette and Dave, J.R. Johnson, Jennifer and Brenda, uh, and their family, Jenny Perkins' sister Lisa, Grace's best friend's family, our Mingo Job Corps students and Mingo RCF residents, all needing our continued prayers as well. Let's lift up our global missionaries, the Haitian family in Germany, the, uh, the Ukrainian missionaries, Tomyevs and Patterson families, our Metro missionaries, Tim and Rachel Richmond, Jerry and Ann West, our um, March prayer focus here in the state of Missouri, William and Don Kramer in Houston, Missouri, need our continued prayers as well as so many other um, global missionaries and North American missionaries uh, stationed around the world needing our uplifting today. In our physical needs, let's pray for Sharon Downing, who's on hospice care, uh, Janet, Robin, Gary Nelson, Judy's brother, Shirley Garner, Devin Huff, George Tibbs, Mike and Tony Hodge, all have health needs. Uh, Sister Pam as mentions this morning that her mother is not doing well and needs a healing touch. Uh, we need to pray also for her dad, who uh, has been battling with shingles for quite some time. Um, also, um, other needs in that area. I'm trying to think of the name of the other that's dealing with, it's Regina Marlin who's dealing with shingles. Let's remember Regina this morning as well, as well as those with mobility issues, uh, Sheila Sadler, Chris Ramey, and Renee, those suffering with arthritis, June Coffer, Rose Brown, Judy Williams' mom, those with back issues, Rebecca Williams, Bob O, Terry Nelson, Britt Moore, Cindy Page, Sister Pam's daughter, uh, Billy Marks, Brianna Williams, Michael Parrott, Lori Gravel, Melinda Cummins, Carolyn Rogers, and Becky Wilson. Let's believe for healing of migraine headaches for Beth, Marsha, Marsha's co-worker son, and Melena. Uh, healing of dementia for Johnny's mom, Kristen's friend's dad, and Vivian. We're believing for uh, healing for Sarah Stroop, Marty Gallot, Riley March, and Carmen's sister Tracy, who are all dealing with the effects of multiple sclerosis. We're praying for those who are battling Parkinson's disease. These include Marsha's mother-in-law, Vivian, Tim Workman, my dad, uh, Carmen's stepfather, Russ, Joey Etheridge, Kristen's friend, Matt, and my mother-in-law, Beulah Ziegler, who also suffers from a myriad of other health issues. Judy's mom, Rebecca Rush, Gary Shepard, Kendra Ortiz, and Robbie Northrup have lung issues that have been ongoing we're praying for healing of stomach issues for Pam's granddaughter, Savannah. Uh, she has an ulcer that's now being treated with meds. We're praying also for Olivia, Natalie, Regina's granddaughter, Aubrey, Heather Spence, and Michael Parrott uh, with stomach issues, and Ginger Williams, who has a hernia and also diverticulitis. Let's keep praying for those who are battling with diabetes. Uh, Kristen's friend, Natalie, Christian Carr, Titus Dornbach, uh, J.R. Johnson, Becca, Christina, Evie, Rose Brown, my aunt Emily Stanley down in Florida, uh, Michael Williams, Anthony Williams, Steve Cummins, myself, Tim Workman, Grady, this is Kristen's cousin, Cindy and Lloyd Page, Brother Pulliam, Jimmy Warren, and Cheryl Lachance. Let's keep lifting up the children who have been battling disease and 
sickness in their bodies. Lorelei, Jen, and Tucker have been locked in a struggle with childhood cancer for well over a year. I know them, and some of them for uh, for about two years. Brantley and Elsie have heart issues. Tano Lopez and Sophia need healing. Spina bifida and scoliosis. Arlo, Abel Ray, Abram Page, Bailey May, Emily. This is Tammy Lawson's granddaughter, Darla Lowry's four-year-old granddaughter, Kyra, Abby Young, Madison, Gus Sappington's grandson, Baby G, Baby Dallas, Navy and Milo, Juniper, Lily, and Finn, all needing healing touch. Finn has been sick for several days. They finally determined uh, after, I believe, four days that he has a staph infection in his blood and he is uh, feeling better. He was up and able to play some um, yesterday for short periods of time, and that's the first time this week he's shown any interest in his normal activities, uh, but he does have this infection that's being treated, and I believe they've just given him a second uh, shot of the new antibiotic they switched him to after, um, after knowing that he has the staph infection. Let's pray for those who are battling cancer and those who are going through uh, chemo and radiation treatments. We need to pray for Don Williams, who had a place removed from his nose and is awaiting biopsy results uh, within the next one to two weeks. Uh, Sherry, a co-worker of Judy's daughter Jennifer, is needing a liver transplant. Uh, Sally Waller has asked us to add Chase Bowman to our prayer list. He is 33 years old and is in stage four liver failure. Sister Pam's granddaughter Haley has some medical issues and is due to deliver her child on April the 27th, so let's uh, cover her in prayer over this next month. Bonnie Petty has been suffering from weight loss of an unknown cause. Buddy Randolph has had a recent stroke. Sue Helton Morse's brother has chronic problems from a past head injury. Mara Sullivan, pastor's wife in New Haven, Missouri, has uh, lupus and autoimmune disease. Vera is dealing with kidney issues and some other complications. Doug Seaball, this is Rebecca Mitchell's father, has prostate and kidney issues. We're praying for Kristen's friend who needs a miracle healing. We're lifting up those who are battling with heart disease and other heart issues, and especially lifting up Mike DeRoos, who is Sister Pam's son-in-law. He's having heart surgery Today, we need to pray for continued recovery for those who have suffered stroke. Uh, Sheila Sappington, Johnny's nephew Joey, Tina's mother, Carmen's cousin Kelly, Brother Billy Huey, Wayne Owens, Anthony Sifford. We're praying for Jim Tweedy, who is regaining strength in rehab after a recent heart problem and pacemaker placement. Pastor David Kent is partially paralyzed from a fall on icy pavement. He's in a rehab unit in Georgia. Seth, we continue to pray for the feeling to return in the one finger that has not regained full function after his hand surgery. Kathy Hardy needs recovery from a broken hip uh, to continue to completion. Dalton uh, broke his back in a car accident. Carmen has sent in a good report on him this week. Let's keep lifting him up as he is definitely making progress. Jewel is recovering from a bad fall. She broke four of her ribs and the ball of her shoulder, Brother Robert Bentley, and Judy Williams, Sister Paula, also uh, breaking bones recently. Brother Bentley, a broken fibula, and we're looking forward to him getting the boot removed uh, very soon. And Judy's sister Paula had surgical repair of a broken foot. Doc Dunn broke his neck recently. Pastor Christopher Dew has been in a long-term care facility recovering very slowly from Guillain-Barre syndrome. And he needs our continued prayers today, as well as those who are recovering from recent surgeries. Uh, Sarah Seaball, Bill Cooper, Don Cossey, Michelle Strange's sister Cindy, Carmen's cousin Shannon, Tammy Lawson, Johnny's cousin Kathy, and Donna Hayes. Let's continue to lift each of these up in our prayers this morning. Good morning to each of you who are joining us live today. Good to see Judy and Kristen with us, um, and Marcia is with us this morning. Terry 
and Johnny. I think I already mentioned Johnny here. I see some of these names posted several times as I page through them uh, because you're making comments. So pray for my short-term memory here, I guess. Jamie, uh, Jamie Joe Day is with us this morning. Uh, God bless Jamie Joe and Sister Pam. Um, we are thankful for each of you and there are others joining with us. I can see there are at least 10 of us right now. That's a great number on this Friday, and I thank God for your part in our prayer team. Uh, let's look to the Word of the Lord again. I'll read the same verse I read yesterday as we're continuing talking about uh, the same thing today. Psalm 37, verse 23 and 24, in the King James says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord. Lord upholdeth him with his hand. The New American Standard Bible uh, says it this way, the steps of a man are, or, are established by the Lord. When he falls, he will not be hurled headlong because the Lord is the one who holds his hand. You may be at what you think is a dead end in your life. You may be saying things this morning like, we're never going to get out of debt. Uh, someone may be saying, I'm never going to have a child. My dream is never going to come true. How is the situation ever going to work out? Right now, it may look dark and you may feel defeated. And it may seem like a mystery to you. But one day you're going to see in the light of eternity how all of it fits together in God's plan. Until then, there are three errors that we need to avoid as we seek God's will that will help us to trust in him even when we don't understand. Yesterday, we talked about the first error, and that is the error of approaching God's will with an attitude of fearfulness um, and not recognizing the uh, power of your relationship and his love for you and that everything in your life has to operate through the lens of God's love. Um, but there are two other things I want to talk to you briefly about today. Uh, first of all, uh, we need to be careful not to become frustrated. If we try to be, uh, if we try to figure out everything in our life, we are going to be very frustrated. Sometimes you're going to do what you think is God's will, and it's going to fail. I've been there many times where I thought God was leading me in some direction, and then I faced failure. So, what do you do when that happens, and when there are no answers? You simply keep. Trusting God, knowing that he's working on your character through all of your circumstances and that he has good plans for you. The other thing I want to caution against today is uh, fatalism. Uh, the idea that everything that happens to you is God's will. And although God's will uh, is going to be manifest in the life of a believer in every situation, we use the example of Joseph where he said, uh, you intended it to me for evil, but God meant it for good. And so God steps into the bad situations, causes all things to work together for our good. That does not mean that everything that happens to us was God's will, but God's will will turn that bad situation and will bring something good out of it. But if we become uh, fatalistic and just say, well, I must have deserved that, or that must have been God's will, that bad situation in my life, then that leads to self-pity, uh, low self-esteem. It causes us to blame God for everything bad in our lives rather than accepting responsibility that we may have caused a problem ourselves. It, fatalism leads to a, a passive approach to the will of God because it makes us think, I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on God to bring me a spouse. I'm waiting on God to get me a job. And God may be saying, I gave you a brain and I gave you two feet. Get out there and try. Do something. Now, when we get out there and begin to do something, uh, we also can remain prayerful and allow the Holy Spirit to check us and to correct us if we start going down the wrong path. But God helps those who help themselves. So let's not be frustrated or fatalistic uh, or fearful, but let's approach the will of God 
with gusto and with confidence today and with actions to back up our faith and God will help us. Amen. I hope that is a blessing to you this morning as we go to prayer. Let's pray in confidence knowing that God's will is going to be manifest in some way in the midst of every trial and circumstance that these who are praying for have been facing. And let's believe that God is going to continue to deliver them out of all afflictions and heal of every sickness, whether it be an emotional, mental, spiritual, or physical need. Our God is here to make someone whole today. Let's pray in his name right now. Lord Jesus, we thank you that we can come to you again today and that we can trust you with our situations and we can trust that your will is being worked out in our lives today we pray right now god for those who are going through terrible uh, tragedies and situations right now god that you would just comfort their heart we know that it's your will today god that we be comforted and that we uh, that we be lifted up whenever we are weary and hurting and we pray god that you would be with each one of these today who have lost someone dear to them. The names we've been mentioning for several days, Lord, we know you're holding them up. You're carrying them right now. You're carrying Robert and Paula and Amanda and Pastor Jeremy Perry. You're carrying Kathy today, God. You're carrying Pastor Milam and his children, Lord, as he fights for his uh, own physical restoration and as he mourns the loss along with his children and his church family of his wife. God, comfort their hearts today. Comfort Rebecca's uh, sister's uh, boyfriend who suffered this loss in his family. We pray for the Mizell family today. Be with Patty and Terry Jean and Mikey today, Lord, and all the rest of the family. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God, that you would just, uh, that your presence would just be strong, Lord, in that homegoing service that your comfort would be present, Lord, in every moment as they face the days ahead. We pray, God, for those who have been traumatized by the Covenant School shooting, those who have witnessed it, and those who have lost someone dear to them. We pray your help for them today in their time of need. We pray, Lord, for these families at Fort Campbell who have lost a loved one in this Black Hawk helicopter accident. Comfort and strengthen them. Give Carmen wisdom in dealing with the children and her job in this situation. In Jesus' name, we pray for Andrew Williams and Mark Mitchell and other military personnel around the world today. God, keep your hand upon them. Protect them. We pray for our nation today that's in such turmoil and in such political chaos. We pray, God, for your help, Lord. In Jesus' name, move and direct God in our nation today. Bring every evil plot of the enemy to naught in the name of Jesus. Let every device of the enemy be returned upon uh, themselves today in Jesus' name. We pray, God, for Pastor Clark's job situation. We believe, God, that he's going to find the, the job that is your will for him at this time. We give you praise and glory, Lord. We pray for these whose names we've called out that have spiritual needs, family needs today, those who are battling with addiction. We believe for their complete uh, healing, those who are uh, backslidden today in heart or uh, even openly have walked away from you, God. We pray that you would heal their backslidings, that you would heal those who are struggling mentally, those who are dealing with addictions, those today who have lost all hope, God. Let there be a restoration of their hope today, of joy and peace that comes from you and from your presence. In the name of Jesus, Lord, you see the family members that so many of our prayer team are concerned about. We pray, God, you would work in their lives, work in the ministries of our churches today, God. We pray, Lord, you would help us to reach those who are in need, to know how best to minister to them, Lord, to have the finance that is needed to minister to these needs around us. We pray for our global and North American missionaries today, God, in every place that they're ministering the word of God today. Let there be open doors. Let there be favor, not only uh, your favor that's upon them, but let them have the favor of key people in their communities and in their nations. We 
pray, God, for those on hospice care and those whose health needs we've mentioned today, those with mobility problems, those dealing with arthritis and back pain, and those who are suffering from migraines today. We believe for healing of dementia, healing of MS, healing of Parkinson's disease, and lung issues today. We believe for healing of stomach problems for those who have been battling this chronically. We believe for healing of diabetes for each one that's affected, healing for each child that's battling a life-threatening disease or a affliction that has gone on for many months or years. We lift up Finn today. We believe God for him to be able to be released from the hospital today. In the name of Jesus, we pray for Lily, God, to regain strength in her ankle. We pray, God, for all these others that we have mentioned today, Lord, that you would reach down and touch them and deliver them. We pray, God, for those who are going through chemo and radiation today, Darla and Virginia, those who are battling cancer. We lift up Melissa and Cheryl, Michelle Clark and Bob Stanley, Amy Dees, Tony Nelson, Marcia's friends, grandparents, Michelle's sister, Cindy, Alice Elizabeth, and Claire. We pray for Dwayne Lewis and Amanda, for Sawyer and Christy, for Kristen's Aunt Jean with Don Hodgkin's lymphoma, Johnny's cousin Kathy, Jamie Joe's grandfather who's battling lung cancer. We lift up Donna Hayes and Ari Bowers, Kristen's friend Betty, Scott Lucia, Sherry, Dennis Phelps, Venus's niece Heather, and Diane Escher. We pray, God, for Don Williams, who's uh, waiting biopsy results, uh, for Sherry, who needs a liver transplant, for Chase Bowman, who's in stage four liver failure. We pray for Haley, God, for her uh, delivery to go well, for her medical issues to be resolved, for that child to be born healthy. In Jesus' name, we lift up Bonnie Petty, Buddy Randolph. Uh, Lord, you see their physical needs. You see Regina and Bob and Shirley today that need healing in their bodies. We pray for Sue's brother, for Sister Sullivan, for Vera, Lord, for Doug Seaball. We pray, God, for his healing today, for Kristen's friend who's in need of a miracle. We lift up those who are dealing with heart issues today. Touch Bud Taylor and Joyce Fisk. Touch Sister Patty Arnold. We pray today, Lord, for Mike Sappington and for Janie's nephew, Blaine, for Kenny Prenzel, for Kelly for Mark Morris, for Cheryl Chance, and for Amy Dees with congestive heart failure. We pray for Michelle Strain's mother, for Dawn and Betty, for Jimmy Warren. In Jesus' name, we believe for Mike DeRoos, God, as he's going into heart surgery today. Guide the surgeons. Lord, protect him today. We pray, God, that this surgery would resolve the issues that he's been dealing with. We believe for continued recovery for those we've mentioned today who are recovering from stroke, from paralysis, from broken bones, suffered in accidents. Uh, we pray, God, for Pastor Chris Dew, uh, who is struggling to recover from Guillain-Barre syndrome. Lord, for those who are recovering from recent surgery, we lift them up today, Sarah and Bill, Dawn and Cindy, Shannon and Tammy, Kathy and Donna. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for hearing our petitions today. And we bring all of these needs to you in faith right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, you are well able. We give you the glory for what you're doing right now. Hallelujah. You're moving in every need. And we give you the praise and the glory for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, we worship you. We glorify you today. We give this day to you. Hallelujah. Have your way in our lives. Let your will be accomplished through us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you for praying with us each and every day this week. And uh, we're looking forward to another great week of prayer and devotion uh, beginning uh, on Monday. Have a great weekend. Uh, let's uh, make sure we're present in the house of the Lord for Palm Sunday. And uh, lift up the name of Jesus uh, before the world and glorify him. He said if he would be lifted up, he would draw all men to him. He's already been lifted up on the cross of Calvary. Now let's lift him up as our king and let him draw people to himself. God bless you. I'll see you Monday morning at 738 on.